tonight on Documentify TV. A discovery hailed as a breakthrough. Fragments of bone pulled from the earth, promising to rewrite the dawn of human history in Japan. They called it Ushikawa Man, potentially the oldest human remains ever found in the country. But science rarely stands still. What happens when new technology revisits old evidence? The story begins in the late 1950s in a limestone quarry in the Ushikawa district of Toyohashi, Japan. Between 1957 and 1959, excavators uncovered fossilized bones. Two key pieces stood out, what appeared to be part of a human upper arm bone, a humerus, and the head of a femur, the thigh bone. Based on the knowledge and techniques of the time, scientists reached a startling conclusion. These were human remains, possibly over 20,000 years old. The discovery created a buzz. It seemed to fill a crucial gap, especially after the tragic loss of another potentially much older fossil, the Akashi Man, destroyed during World War II air raids. Ushikawa Man became the prime candidate for Japan's earliest human ancestor found on the mainland. For decades, Ushikawa Man held its place in the story of prehistoric Japan. But doubts began to surface as early as the late 1980s. Then, recently, a team led by anthropologist Jen Sua from the University of Tokyo applied modern technology to these old bones. The game changer was computed tomography, CT scans. This technology allowed researchers to look inside the fossils, mapping their internal structure and density in ways impossible in the 1950s. They compared these detailed scans to numerous bear bones, specifically ancient brown bears, Ursus arctos, and Asian black bears. The results were clear and definitive. The bone identified as a human humerus perfectly matched the radius, a forearm bone of a brown bear. The supposed human femur head, it too matched a bear, not a human. The subtle, crucial differences, invisible to the naked eye decades ago, were now unmistakable. Ushikawa man was, in fact, Ushikawa bear. How could the original identification be so wrong? It wasn't necessarily a mistake born of carelessness. In the 1950s, very few ancient bear fossils had been found in Japan. The original researchers simply lacked the extensive comparative collection needed. They made a reasonable interpretation based on the limited evidence available to them. Their descriptions were detailed and accurate. Only the final conclusion was flawed by the lack of comparative data. This correction forces a shift in the timeline of human settlement on mainland Japan. The title of the oldest confirmed human remains now passes to fossils found in another limestone quarry near Hamakita, about 25 miles east of Ushikawa. These fragments, including leg, arm, and collarbones, and parts of a skull, date back roughly 14,000 to 17,000 years. Still ancient, but significantly later than the 20,000 years once claimed for Ushikawa. However, this doesn't erase early humans from the wider Japanese archipelago. On the southern Ryukyu Islands, human fossils have been found dating back much further, some potentially as far back as 32,000 years. These finds remain crucial for understanding the earliest migrations into the region. The Ushikawa correction mainly refocuses the story for the mainland. The story of Ushikawa man becoming Ushikawa bear is a powerful example of the scientific process. It shows how interpretations can change as new evidence and better technologies emerge. Similar re-identifications have happened elsewhere, like a bone in Alaska, initially thought to be bare, 
later proven by DNA to be a Native American woman from 3,000 years ago. The Toyohashi City Museum is updating its exhibits to reflect the new findings. While no longer human, the Ushikawa fossils remain valuable, offering insights into the ancient brown bears that once roamed Japan. Ironically, the initial excitement over the mistaken Ushikawa man actually helped stimulate interest and funding for Japanese paleontology, ultimately leading to a better, more accurate understanding of the deep past, including this very correction. That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time, right here on Documentify TV.